Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another very special edition of Ramadan Synchronized. Now UNHCR and Subkim have partnered to promote refugees education in camps and today in studio I'm joined by Amina and Phillips Oderi who are representatives from UNHCR to tell us more about it. Now for the longest time when we think about refugees we've been thinking about you know food, shelter, clothing, and now education. Where did you realize that? Where, where, where was the gap coming in? Um, well, I should thank so much for having us on the program. Uh, in terms of focus on education, we felt because in Kenya we have 470,000 refugees here. Yes. Many of them have been here for over 20 years. It's been uh, because of protracted situations from their home country mm -hmm. that they are residing in these camps. While food and water and shelter are necessary and basic needs that we should fulfill, we realize the gap of education and the importance of investing in refugees mm -hmm. so that they're able to be self-reliant and that inshallah one day possibly inshallah. to go back to their home countries and help rebuild the nation. Mm -hmm. So for us, education was a marker for us to invest in for the long term. As they say the saying, you give a boy a fish, you feed him for a day. Mm -hmm. You give a boy a f uh, the teachings and the schooling to learn how to fish, you feed him for life. Mm -hmm. It is within that concept that we gather together and mm -hmm. it has been a great partnership between Subcom and UNHCR. Great. So Philip, which level of education is affected the most? We have the primary, tertiary and uh, yeah. Uh, secondary. Yeah, over the years, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you and it's here with its partners have tried a lot to improve uh, the access of, of children for uh, mm -hmm. the basic level of education. Yes. So a lot of work was, had gone into uh, primary education with the hope that within a few years the situations back home will resolve and mm -hmm. there will be uh, refugees will be able to go back home. Mm -hmm. But what that meant is we have a lot of uh, students who are able to access the primary level, although yes. it's not up to the quality uh, because of the numbers, the sheer numbers that have mm -hmm. but they're very very limited opportunities. If you could emphasize how yeah. many numbers do we have right now? Yeah so uh, of the population of, uh, of kids that we have. No, uh, the refugees who are unable to acquire this education. Yeah. How many numbers are we looking at? Yeah so uh, uh, that I'll have to get the statistics from our education unit but what okay. I know is 51% uh, of the kids in the camps who are of school age Mm -hmm. are, not, uh, are, are the ones who are only able to access the primary uh, education. Wow. But 49% are not able to access mm -hmm. of the school age. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The numbers, uh, yeah. of course, uh, are there. And, and if you look at the statistics for, yeah. for Kenya, mm -hmm. like 78% of the 470,000 refugees that we have mm -hmm. is uh, women and children. So we have mm -hmm. a lot of youth, and that's the first thing that hits you when you go to the camps. There are very many uh, young people in the camps, mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of them. And like uh, with the schooling uh, spaces that are available, they're not enough. You find mm -hmm. a class has like 120 students when the national mm -hmm. uh, level uh, in Kenya, where yeah. the Kenya level is, is supposed to be around 50, I think. Wow. Yeah, so you see the classes are overcrowded, yeah. and there's some opportunities uh, at, at the primary level, but mm -hmm. when you move higher up, like uh, for secondary, mm -hmm. it's only like 26. And what 26. role is the government playing, if I may ask? Yeah. I mean, we are incredibly grateful for the government of Kenya for being a host country, for taking in so many refugees and for providing the, the camp and the space for them to be able to stay here. And we're working closely with them to develop yes. um, mechanisms to ensure education for the long term. Um, but really what we are using this campaign for is to reach out to the community okay. um, with Subkim and with stakeholders from Isli business community, mm -hmm. religious leaders, interfaith. This campaign is not just for Muslims and it's not for 
from Muslim refugees. Okay. It is using the spirit of Ramadan to bring that. everyone. I love this, how we yeah. from different faiths <laughs> together. Yes, yeah. it is very much. Like, I'm a Muslim from Canada, yeah. and, I, and I'm working here for UNHCR in Kenya mm -hmm. with Philip, who is yeah. not Muslim, but together we are wow. using our passion to protect people forced to flee to put this on as being a successful campaign. Mm -hmm. And the, I'm incredibly impressed by the Muslim community here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you know, we had our iftar yes. dinner. You might, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. We had our iftar dinner last week, and we raised 15.5 million shillings in two hours. Wow. And you know, Philip and I were both there, heavily involved, and it was incredible That's to see Muslims incredible. and non-Muslims, the community of all shapes and sizes, come out with yeah. such generosity to mm -hmm. give. And that's why we know that this Ramadan campaign can be used to help issues within our own country mm -hmm. to protect the refugees here. Great. So why exactly did you choose the month of Ramadan mm -hmm. and not any other month? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, what I really admire about uh, Muslims and mm -hmm. during the month of Ramadan is mm -hmm. your ability to like really look inwards and also to look at the community and see like how you can help the community like the spirit of Ramadan for me uh, being not being a Muslim but looking at the way Muslims are during the month of Ramadan is really inspiring mm -hmm. and we thought it's a good platform to yeah. sort of start off the campaign of course it's not uh, it doesn't mean that after Ramadan the education yeah. needs will end but it's just like starting with the month of, 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 of Ramadan and using the spirit of Ramadan of taking care of each other, taking care of our community. And we have Ramadan campaigns that are happening in other parts of the world. So we thought, why not here? Why not like engage the Muslim community here to support refugees who are within our borders? They are our neighbors. And you know, like in 2007, mm -hmm. there are some Kenyans who became refugees, yeah? yeah. So, and they went to... Because so, of the post-election yeah, Why do we keep... Uh, so for us, it was like, uh, we should as much as we should support other crises that are happening across the world, but we should also look closely and say, okay, what are we doing about the situations in our borders, about mm -hmm. our neighbors here from Somalia, from South Sudan, from mm -hmm. Burundi. So it's using the spirit of Ramadan, of coming together to really support them. And yeah. I think it's, it's, it's really powerful, a powerful time. Mm -hmm. And even in the Iftar dinner, like we had even non-Muslims as, wow. as part of the, that of the speaks Iftar volumes. dinner. At yeah. the end of the day, this is humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So at the end of the day, we are all humans and we are all like uh, together in this yeah. and we need to hold each other's uh, hand and support each other. And I think that's the mm -hmm. spirit of Ramadan and that mm -hmm. is why we decided to launch the campaign during Ramadan. Mm. Okay, so apart from uh, the partnership between UNHCR and Soup Kim, who else is involved? Is it just the two? Yeah. No. So the, the main uh, partnership uh, was between UNHCR here and SOPCAM, but we had uh, assistance from other uh, organizations. We had uh, the chairman of NAMLEF also being part of the, of the committee that was uh, like uh, organizing this campaign. We had representatives from the business community. Mm -hmm. We had uh, the MP for Kamkunji, Honorable Yusuf Hassan, also yeah. part of the committee to really come together. Uh, like uh, to to craft this campaign and to see how we can engage the public in Kenya, not mm -hmm. only Muslims but the general public, yeah. to raise awareness about this uh, need for education for refugees, mm -hmm. but also to raise resources and get opportunities for refugees mm -hmm. to go to school. Now there must be someone out there who has contributed, who is wanting to contribute, and is wondering, you know, how will you coordinate these funds? Mm -hmm. So we work really closely with the education colleagues in our in our um, organization yes. because aside from emergency relief, UNHCR ov oversees these programs and we work mm -hmm. with a lot of implementing partners. We are only 20% funded here within UNHCR Kenya. We have a lot of need in terms of our budget to be able to provide for people forced to flee that are staying in the camps. Mm -hmm. So the funds will be used with utmost accountability and transparency. We intend to have a post-Ramadan report that we would like to share with all of the donors that provided funding for it, mm -hmm. and it will be used across primary, secondary, and tertiary. Things like increasing desk space, opening up the classrooms, providing more textbooks. Um, right now there's only 13 secondary schools across both camps. We want to change that. We want to include more to allow for the huge volume of refugees that are incredibly eager to learn but are mm -hmm. sitting idle in the camps right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what are your long-term plans after this Ramadan campaign? What happens next? Yeah. The long-term plan is basically to bring all stakeholders to uh, at the table to okay. say like what solutions can we find yeah in other countries uh, part of the solution has been integration of like uh, refugees mm -hmm. into the national 
schooling systems yes. which creates for a more sustainable way of, of, of supporting them. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, also discussions like to open up the opportunity. So it's basically to, to begin that conversation on how can we do this more sustainably. If it's mm -hmm. partnerships with the universities to provide uh, scholarship opportunities for refugees, if it's uh, partnerships with the, uh, the private sector as well yes. to see what ways can we come together to create innovative solutions to allow these refugees in the camps to access that education. Mm -hmm. So it's bringing all stakeholders together to find solutions. The solution does not rest with UNHCR. We don't mm -hmm. have all the answers. We might have a private sector uh, partner who has an idea of yeah. a way in which we can provide education to the thousands. So it's opening up the space for that conversation, for everybody to come in, for you even to come in with your ideas and for suggestions sure. and we sit together and see what works mm -hmm. and we implement that uh, mm -hmm. for more. Because uh, for us it's all about sustainability. We want yeah. it to be sustainable for the future, not something that we do on a daily basis and then after that uh, they still need more. That's why even mm -hmm. we chose education because of that sustainability aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Amina, now for Kenyans who are watching right now and yeah. wondering, you know, they have seen it and seen a value in it yeah. and want to contribute, how can, they, how can they do it? Thanks for asking. Yeah, we are accepting contributions on M-Pesa. Okay. So it's account um, pay bill number 329378. Mm -hmm. That's 329 three seven eight uh, account Ramadan and to just kindly give generously I mean it is the month of Ramadan so the rewards are, are huge so inshallah hoping that we can raise a lot of money if you can kindly repeat it again for sure I'll repeat it one more time uh -huh. so it's pay bill number on Ambesa three two nine three seven eight account Ramadan um, and you can also visit our website, donate.unhcr.org forward slash education. And you're happy you can pay on, online or pay through M-Pesa. There's also an opportunity to, to pay whatever generous amount you're able to do. And we hope uh, that we'll be able to make history this Ramadan and showcase um, how Kenyans have come out together to support refugee education here. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. So now to wrap up this show, what are your last words to the public? You, because you guys work really closely <laughs> with the refugees yeah. down there. And of course, they're brothers and our sisters. Yeah. And it's been Ramadan. Mm. I think we're in the spirit, you know, mm. have the spirituality vibe right. going around. And even those who are not Muslims, yes, absolutely. what would you like to tell them, Amina? Um, I think what I'd like to say is that Philip and I have both had, have had opportunities to visit the Dab and, Ref and Kakuma camp. And going there, I'm always left incredibly motivated to come back and advocate for the refugee rights. And I've met such inspiring young girls and boys, very um, motivated and desiring to be nurses, community workers, mm -hmm. teachers, doctors, to want to help their community, be contributing members of society, return back home to places like Somalia and South Sudan to help rebuild the nations, but are absolutely idle. They are completely in limbo. Mm -hmm. They are sitting there, losing hope, feeling very deserted. Mm -hmm. And it is for that reason that I get even emotional talking about it, because it is for those people in those camps that are just you know, in our country's border that we are trying to assist so much with these educational opportunities. So that's my last message to, to all of you, is to really consider them as you are able to bring your children to school, mm -hmm. how many that are not able to do so. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I would say like there's nothing as dignifying as being able to take care of yourselves. And when refugees flee their homes, they lose that uh, opportunity of being able to take care of themselves and their families. And if you go there to the camps, you see people who are your age, looking hopeless. They mm -hmm. are very young, they're energetic. They just need opportunities. They don't need handouts. Mm -hmm. They need opportunities. And that's like, uh, why for me it's very personal. I feel like uh, if I didn't get the same opportunities that I did in life, I would not mm -hmm. be here. So I can imagine refugees who are very eager, very yeah. brilliant, they have all these ideas, but they lack opportunities. And how that can eat away from your dignity. So we have a chance to come together and help restore dignity for refugees and give them that opportunity to be able to take care of themselves and not be seen as beggars all the time yeah and we can do that through education that is the best tool that we have right now that can give them that dignity so let's come together muslims non-muslims all of us together yeah. through the spirit of the month of ramadan and even beyond to just 
like help restore dignity for refugees and empower yeah. them and give them an opportunity wow. to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And may God make this campaign be a very big success. And our brothers and sisters in the refugee camps, may they get education and, you know, shine out there. Well, we have come to the end of this special edition of Ramadan Synchronized. Now, when we come together, good things happen. Stolen from Safaricom. But before we end the show, there are a few clips. Take a look. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Jina langu ni Daktari Yusuf Rahman Mzibo. This is an appeal by Supkem and UNHCR to all Muslims during this holy month of Ramadan to come together, raise funds to help refugee students in the Kakuma and the dub refugee camps, many of the students do not have the hope of going beyond primary education. The Holy Quran and the teaching of the prophets emphasize of the need of education. We are therefore appealing to you as Muslims during this holy month of Ramadan for your generosity to help these needy students to have a hope of continuing with their education, to have a career and also to have the opportunity to go back home and rebuild their nation. Remember, Ramadan is the month where the Quran came. And the first word of the Quran is Iqra, which means read, education, literacy, and learning. For refugee children, education, means life, life today and life tomorrow. It's crucial for refugee children to access education. We will see a huge difference in lives of these children, in lives of these youth, and when they go home, it will be amazing how they will contribute and build their societies and leadership. My name is Fatiha Abdullah. I am the UNSR representative in Kenya. Join us to support the Ramadan appeal to educate the refugee children in Kenya. To donate via M-Pesa, Babel, 329378, account Ramadan. Did you know that more than two-thirds of refugee children in Kenya are not attending secondary school? They cannot go to secondary school. Because of lack of space and funding. This therefore means we have a huge number of refugee youth each year sitting idle in camps. A whole generation of youths in our camps are stuck in limbo, are feeling desperate, feeling rejected, feeling hopeless and deserted. This is why in this holy month of Ramadan, we are on a mission to mobilize the Muslim community in Kenya to give refugee youth a chance at education. Remember this month of Ramadan is the time when we can come together in strength and numbers to make a difference in the lives of thousands of young people. Join us to support the Ramadan appeal to educate the refugee children in Kenya. Did you know that more than two-thirds of refugee children in Kenya are not attending secondary school? They cannot go to secondary school because of lack of space and funding. This therefore means we have a huge number of refugee youth each year sitting idle in camps. A whole generation of youths in our camps are stuck in limbo, are feeling desperate, feeling rejected, feeling hopeless and deserted. This is why in this holy month of Ramadan, we are on a mission to mobilize the Muslim community in Kenya to give refugee youth a chance at education. Remember this month of Ramadan is the time when we can come together in strength and numbers to make a difference in the lives of thousands of young people. Join us to support the Ramadan appeal to educate the refugee children in Kenya. Did you know that more than two-thirds of refugee children in Kenya are not attending secondary school? And only 13% of refugee youth in Kenya have access to tertiary education. They cannot go to secondary school because of lack of space and funding. This therefore means 
we have a huge number of refugee youth each year sitting idle in camps. This is now becoming a major crisis that we can no longer ignore. A whole generation of youths in our camps are stuck in limbo, are feeling desperate, feeling rejected, feeling hopeless and deserted. As the Muslim community, we have a moral responsibility to take action. This is why in this holy month of Ramadan, we are on a mission to mobilize the Muslim community in Kenya to give refugee youth a chance at education. Having access to education and quality of education will help them not only to build themselves, but one day, inshallah, to also rebuild their nations. Remember this month of Ramadan is the time when we can come together in strength and numbers to make a difference in the lives of thousands of young people. Join us to support the Ramadan appeal to educate the refugee children in Kenya. You can make your donation through an MPES account of 329-378 account Ramadan. Remember also that no amount is too small. Each of us giving whatever we have can make the difference to those refugee youth. Assalamu alaikum, jina langu ni Sumaya Hassan, NEC member wa Supreme Council of Kenya Muslims. When I think about refugee youth in Kenya, I feel that if I was in their shoes and I was the one in the camp, I would want my Muslim brothers and sisters out there to come together and help me get an education. And therefore, I want to say to them that we have not forgotten them and we, their Muslim brothers and sisters, will come together and raise funds to help the refugee youth get an education. To help us make this dua a reality, please join us in donating whatever you can towards this Ramadan appeal for educating refugees in Kenya. Remember, nothing is too small. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdullah Abdi. I'm the chairman of NAMLEF, which is short for National Muslim Leaders Forum of Kenya. The holy month of Ramadan is the time when we do a self-assessment of our contributions to mankind and humanity. We have got thousands of refugee children who don't get education. Imagine if your child could not go to school. My appeal to you, my brothers and sisters, is this is the time for us to rise up. It's a moral obligation of each one of us here in Kenya as Muslims during this month for us to recognize this gap and for us to contribute generously so that we will be able to assist refugee children to further the education. We owe these children, we owe this future generation that we stand up now. Horizon TV, the beacon 